every person that comes up to me, I, do you want to talk about interesting things? You know? Except it has been kind of weird how many guys have been coming up to me being like, dude, I don't whack off anymore because of you. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, man, good for you. It's like, no, no, I've got to tell you my story. I'm like, stop! <laughs> I don't want to hear about you whacking off, man. But it's cool. That's good to see. It was an interesting experience coming here. Uh, TSA, as we've all seen, has gotten pretty intense. And uh, I got selected. I got selected. They, they said a mail on mail assist. <laughs> That's what they call it. They go, mail on mail assist. I'm like, it's about to go down, bro. They broke Charlie. <laughs> and then you see some creepy dude putting on gloves. So, you know, what's that, bro? You got the same guy. There's only one guy. But I like to flip it on him now. I don't like to be the victim. I'm no victim. Now when they come out, they're like, is it okay if I rub the inside of your leg? I'm like, you goddamn right that's okay. <laughs> and then as they do it, I go, look at me in the eye when you do it. I want to see your eyes. And they're like, you're good to go. I'm like, I'll see you next time, won't I, buddy? <laughs> I, uh... <sighs> Man, there's so much we can talk about. It's like... What's up, bud? We never went to the moon? Yeah, we, we really did never went to the moon. I mean, that's pretty obvious. But, that, but that's a, it's a false binary. Like, when you, when you argue over whether or not you went to the moon, you're assuming moon. <laughs> like, you know, see, I'm all about uh, killing wizards. And I know how wizards work. That's how, it, it's, it's as absurd as going up to a random girl in a bar and being like, are we going to have sex with or without a condom? <laughs> Imagine engaging in that argument, where it's like, well, I don't even know you, so condom. It's like, you've just accepted sex. <laughs> you guys see how that works? It's the same with, did we go to the moon? I think we went to the moon. I don't think we, I'm like, what the fuck is a moon? <laughs> I don't think you can even learn that, where you gave Weiss. <laughs> yeah, give it up for Dave Weiss. Give it up for everybody that put this all together. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting being really tall. You know, I'm six foot eight, which is just an absurd height. And little dudes always come up to me and they're like, hey man, you play basketball? I'm like, no. They're like, you're wasting it. <laughs> and then they get sad. I'm gonna start going up to short people and being like, hey man, you get shot out of a cannon? <laughs> That's what you should do. Do you make toys for Santa Claus with those little bitch hands? That's what you should do with your little bitch hands. Yeah, I'm a height supremacist. <laughs> um, it, the cool thing about this community, I found, is that you guys don't want to be scared anymore. You don't want to be victims. And it's like, you realize how much effort is put into scaring us. You know, if you look at Time Magazine, like every generation has a different rollout of fears. You know, like Gen X had their own fears. They had uh, uh, Bigfoot. They had uh, Quicksand. And they had the Bermuda Triangle. You know, that's what a certain generation were scared all the time. It's all these movies. You're going to, you know, quicksand is going to get you. You know, is, it, is anyone here in Gen X? What do you do if you uh, fall into quicksand? Does anyone know? You see how everyone fucking has a plan? Quicksand has killed zero people in the history of people. It doesn't exist. And everyone's like, dude, if you go in quicksand, you got to go like a board. If you go in quicksand, you gotta grab a vine, obviously. No, you swim in the quicksand. There isn't any quicksand! You know, it's the same with, with uh, Bigfoot. You know, there was just some, like, naked Armenian guy in the woods. You know, and, and he just so gets him on video. And then the next generation, the millennials, uh, had, what did we have? We had, uh, no, we had, we had uh, acid rain. You know, everybody's like, acid rain, Joe Rogan's like, <laughs> Not that kind of acid joke. Um, <laughs> thank you, fellas. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, I, I get it. It's like, no, th you guys are a great audience for like conference vibes. I've done a lot of conferences in my life, and this one, it's good vibes. But it's, we're not going to have that like, 
energy like a theater, because it is, it is an Embassy of Sweets. But we're doing a damn good job, and I'm proud of everyone. Woo! Woo! And so, uh, millennials, yeah, someone else said, oh, uh, that we had AIDS. When I was a kid, that was what they were scaring us with, was uh, AIDS, you know, it's like, if you, if you skinned your knee in, in recess in the 80s, you know, all the kids would be like, you're one of them AIDS kids now. We, and we'd have to sit in the AIDS, this is all real, we'd have to sit at the AIDS table in the cafeteria with the other AIDS kids. Because of course, AIDS was, was the real threat. So I was born in 1980, so I was uh, right in between Gen X and Millennials, so I had both the fears. My biggest fear was that I was gonna be stuck in quicksand and then Bigfoot was gonna give me AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> it never happened. Um, you know, what's that, bud? What? It's all right. I, I, I like you guys enough, so I assume it's not a heckler, it's someone adding information. <laughs> what are you saying, it's a hoax? What, what, which thing's the hoax? All of it. AIDS? Yeah, yeah, I'm not buying into AIDS very much these days. You know, I fucked like a thousand guys and I never got AIDS. <laughs> Imagine someone just trying to prove it. They're like, listen, I'm not gay or anything, but I'm gonna show everybody I don't have AIDS. First thing I'm gonna do is fuck Joe Rogan. <laughs> you know that, right? Hilarious. I just love Rogan. Joe Rogan. He's just so small. <laughs> what, 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 what noise was that, bro? You that guy just went, ah! So, uh... So, how did we all get to this place? For me, it was having kids. You know, I had, uh, I, had, I had children. I'm really blessed to have kids. Make some noise for children. Have children. We do feel a lot of fun. You know, my, fir my, my first son's first word was more. And he go, more. And so I'm like, okay. So I, I just start building stuff. And he's like, more. So I, I take him, like, I, I used to take him cross country skiing, and I'd be skiing with him. He's like, more. And I'm like, I am the tiger. You know? He's like, more. And then we come home, and I see my wife, and she gives me a kiss, and he's like, more. So I made another one, a brother. <laughs> and then he learned no, and I haven't done shit since. I just really. But what happened, what happened with, with the, trying to figure out what our solar system is, and if the, what the Earth is, and the globe line, all that stuff. It honestly, one of the big things that happened for me, besides just trying to beat Savanier in a debate, <laughs> but well, I'll tell you that story in a second. But what happened to me is my son asked me why the sky was blue. And I was 37, and I didn't know. You know, he's like, Dad, why is the sky blue? And I'm like, you know, cut to 12 hours later, I'm listening to Crow 777, like, <laughs> <laughs> That dude's awesome. Give it up for Jason, too. Those guys, those guys have some gravy. You know, once I, I became a Crow Triple Seven radio member, and the second hour is pure gravy, uncut gravy. It's, it's amazing. They, they get to talk about the real shit. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. All right, so uh, there's a lot of nonsense going on in the world. You know, I was uh, I used to live in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was in the entertainment uh, business. And everybody used to always do nonsense stuff. Like my one buddy was like, will you do a walk? I'm like, yeah, let's go for a walk. He's like, for skin cancer awareness? I was like, outside? <laughs> like, you know, I was, I was like, yeah, outside, no. I'm like, it's fine. So we did the walk, just to let everyone know skin cancer exists. And then, uh, and then later, I remember Halloween. This is one of the first times I realized I had to leave Los Angeles. I was, uh, we're all off for Halloween. Me and my buddy were both wearing sombreros. I was uh, Jose, he was Jose B. <laughs> we're a two-man crew. You know, the same guy that asked me to do that uh, skin cancer awareness walk comes up to me, he's like, excuse me. And I'm like, you talking to Jose or Jose B? We're a character, you know? <laughs> he's like, I'm talking to you, Owen. 
And at that point, I knew this little bastard was serious. So I was like, do you want to be, you want to get a sombrero? You know, we can be one direction if we get a third guy. And he's like, you can't wear that sombrero, white man. That isn't your hat. That's their hat. No. Right? And I was like, what are you talking about, man? How am I supposed to be hose B if I don't have props? I don't look anything like hose B. And he's like, that's cultural appropriation. And I didn't know what that meant because I'm fun to be around. <laughs> uh, like, I know I never heard of it. And I looked it up, and it basically means when, like, one group of people adopts something from another group of people. And it only is when people with white, white people do it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought about it, because I don't like pissing people off. I was like, am I offending people? You know, all the Hispanic people at the party we had no problem. They were like, oh, let's be, it's fucking hysterical. I'm like, yeah, well, this little Jew over here has a problem with it, you know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so he's a little Jew, too. And so I started thinking about it, and I'm like, should I take off the sombrero? No, because if anyone needs that size brim, it's the whites. Because the sun is not our amigo, ladies and gentlemen. And I started thinking about it. The whitest people on the planet have the smallest hats. Jews, right? So these Hispanic people with beautiful brown protective skin, so the, the sun doesn't affect their skin, they have all this brim. And the Jews, these little pale guys, have these tiny little hats that look like they should be like swim caps for kittens. <laughs> so I propose the Jews and the Mexicans switch hats, and that's how we cure skin cancer. That's right. Talking about real solutions. Not you off in the park, motherfucker. Switch hats. Uh, I tried to learn Spanish. You learn a lot about uh, the world when you try to learn another language. You know, Coach was up talking about that. They had a whole episode about uh, language. You know, and uh, I was hanging out with some of my Mexican buddies, and I was trying to impress them with my new Spanish knowledge. And we're, of course, we're looking at the moon. And I'm like, el luna. <laughs> and they're like, la luna, la luna. I'm like, well, why is it el? I'm like, what does el mean? He's like, duh. I'm like, what does la mean? He's like, duh. I'm like, what am I missing here? He's like, the moon is feminine. La. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, the moon has a pussy. <laughs> well, that's what he said. You know, I'm one of those old school people that think gender isn't chosen by your whims. It's whether or not you have a penis or a vagina. Uh, yeah, sorry, Caitlin. <laughs> I knew something was off when Caitlin Jenner wins Woman of the Year, but hasn't been a woman for a full year. You know, it's like, <laughs> don't you have to be a woman for a full year to even qualify? This monstrosity is more of a woman than my wife, my mother, my, <laughs> the people that create life. This old track star freak wants to chop his cock off and play make believe. Uh, so anyway, La Luna, and I started staring at, this, at, the, at the moon, thinking about it. The moon is very feminine. Everything about it's female. It's got a 28-day cycle. Wow. It's, no, it's true. 28-day cycle, it's just like a woman, right? You know, uh, NASA spent trillions of dollars to plant a flag on it, and then you found out they fucking lied. <laughs> you know, it's like wolves howl at, like, oh, what you up to, girl? You know? <laughs> Drives you crazy. You know, you want to write poetry to it, it makes it insane. It's always... It needs its space, but it's always there watching, always listening, but it needs its space. It goes dark a few days a month, that's pretty crazy, but don't bring it up, just get through it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a woman. That, and then I've been a big fan of the animal, the bear, for a long time, and so I was trying to uh, impress my Mexican buddies. I'm like, la oso, the bear. And they're like, el oso. I'm like, bears have dicks, bears have dicks. The bear is a masculine animal, and it makes sense because he's big and he's hairy, he's trying to do the right thing, but he ends up just killing a ton of fish. <laughs> you know? this comes up. And then I was looking at my house, and I've been through a lot in the last few years in the comedy world. It's, you know, it's been pretty crazy. And, uh, you know, when you start saying anything remotely true, they try to humiliate you and kick you out of their little clubs. But I still was looking at my house, and I was like, 
I bought that house from jokes. Or as the Spanish say, hoax. <laughs> and, and I was taking pride in that. I'm like, that house was from just me being funny. Like, I'm that funny that I'm like, acreage. That's for me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, La Casa, or El Casa. I fucked up the joke. <laughs> and then I realized that Casa is, uh, is La Casa. It's not El Casa. That's my wife's home. She made that a home. That's my wife's house. And, and if I fuck off like a big bear and she kicks me out, I'm forced to live in El Apartamento. <laughs> Um, do you guys, would you guys rather hear music first or do a little Q&A first? What do you guys want? You want more music? Uh, I'll play you guys a little music. I won't keep it too long. Uh, I gotta figure out what, what nonsense, uh, what nonsense sound they put this on. <laughs> All right, here we go. We have this, and now we have this. Thank you, man. <laughs> Hang on, let me change the sound real quick. Yeah. Oh, God, we really are at the Flat Earth Conference. <laughs> I'm 
doing the best I can, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to find a sound that's supposed to be like a piano, but instead everything is like, okay, to understand this next sound, you have to be on a lot of DMT. <laughs>
<laughs> if it's spinning a thousand miles an hour, how does a plane land? Good morning. What do you think the moon is? <laughs> Not even. What's that, bud? It's made out of what? It's made out of cheese? That's more accurate than NASA. Could be cheese. It's made out of pure un uncut gravy, just pure Colombian gravy. <laughs> I, uh, I used to have this band called Coldplay back in the day, because they had this song called Yellow. You guys remember Yellow? Yeah. It went, look at the stars, look how they shine for you. And women and homosexuals are like, me. <laughs> Everything you do. Oh, yeah. And then I, I realized I, I had some respect for Chris Martin because he's one of the only people in history uh, as a rock star who admitted it wasn't about anything. You know, he was on Howard Stern and Stern's like, what's that song Yellow about? He's like, Yellow? I was trying to make my mates giggle. We were watching the telly and recording an album. And I was all like, look at the stars there, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right. And then we wrote it on a piece of paper. And then we sold it. And made millions of dollars. And Stern's like, yeah, but you're saying some true things. Like, like stars are yellow. He goes, stars aren't even yellow. <laughs> Maybe in a Christmas card, but not in reality. They're blue or white, but not yellow at all. And, and if you think about how many songs are lies, you know, like how many songs were just nonsense? I'll give you examples with just the word yellow in the title. Yellow Black Batter by Pearl Jam. You guys remember that song? Yeah. I used to love that song. Then I realized Eddie Vedder doesn't speak any English. This is, this is my impression of Eddie Vedder singing Yellow Black Batter. Ready? Home, see you later on a Porsche. Six, 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 six. So I started realizing 
something. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and so I realized something. That it, the reason I never had a number one hit song was not because of my words. It was because I didn't play the right chords. So tonight I want you guys to help me live a dream that I've never had. I wrote my own number one song and I'm going to do it to the Coldplay chords because apparently that's the right answer. So I'm going to see a title of a song that I know you don't know, but I want you to pretend like it's all real. Alright, so, yeah. This next, when I see the title of the song, like, lose your mind. This next song, I promised myself I would never play it again. But if we could go back in time just once, you may remember this one from back in the day. I know I do. It's called OTPHJ. <laughs> So when I say you're in a Walgreens, just complete explosion. And make it real, feel it. This next song, I promised someone very special I'd never play it again. But if we can go back in time just once, you may remember this one from back in the day. It's called OTPHJ. Yeah! Fuck you, CBS. Over the 
in a Walgreens, over the pants and jive. In a Walgreens, over the pants and jive. In a Walgreens, and it was all yellow. And uh, oh, thanks, pal. Oh, nice water. Uh, this one guy had a really good question before the show started. I figured I'd uh, bring him up here and ask the question. Matt, if you're around, come up here and ask your question, buddy. It's a fantastic hey! question. Where's Matt at? Now you come up here. All right, so uh, Matt has a good question. Let's, uh, let's hear what he has to say. Hey, guys, thank you. My name is Matt. I'm this a uh, regular dude with my girlfriend, we want to uh, uh, have a homestead one day and have a bunch of kids. Uh, Victoria, why don't you come up? I never tie my shoes. All right, so does anybody have any questions for me before I get out of here? And again, one more time for the new couple. That's, a, that, that's what life's all about. You know, family's everything. Family's everything. And all, of these, all of these lies and all this shame and all this bullshit is to keep you from that simple thing right there of, uh, you know, a man getting on his knees, proposing, and then making life with that beautiful cock of his. <laughs> Just kidding. I just wanted to say something for you. Because I was feeling a little too emotional. All right, so uh, anybody got any questions for me? Explain some buying Okay, so you guys owe a, a lot of gratitude to this guy named Eric DeBay, and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why. It's not why you think, so relax. He was so abrasive and so annoying with all his people being like, you won't take the bit Savania. The times it was Eric DeBay, but I named him Savania. Wait, you want to be Savania? Because he will prove that the earth is flat, and I was like, fuck this guy. So I got all my guys together, and I'm like, give me all the blow proofs you got. I'm about to turn this asshole into dust. And then the more, it, it, the more they gave me glow proof, the more I was like, more, more though. <laughs> and I'm dead serious, so as annoying as Savania is, because he's annoying, he's like, why would you debate me? I'm here. I'm like, just in the male hierarchy, that's just not how we behave. So, but he's been right about a lot, and he's the one who antagonized me into facing. Because I'm a competitive person. I don't, I don't do things that I think I'm going to fail at. I don't lie to myself because it's weakness. Those are Achilles' heels in war, right? You know, it's like, no, my shield is great. It's like it's made out of glass. Glow, hey, hey, you're stupid. No, get a better shield. You know? And so when I realized the globe argument was total nonsense, I had to face uh, the reality that we're not on a spinning ball. And it's great. And I don't, people shouldn't be afraid of that. It makes more sense. And so despite Savania's annoyance, it's like that's kind of what woke me up to it because my competition, my desire to beat him, is the reason that I had to face the reality that you can't prove a spinning globe to the point where it becomes, like, you almost take it personally, where, where you're like trying to track down your third grade teacher and like, why'd you lie to me, bitch? <laughs> but they didn't know, they, they didn't know. You know, that's, that's a big part of this process is forgiveness, where it's like, they didn't know when it was flat. Um, does anyone else have any questions? What's up, bro? Uh, how does homosexuality help us win the culture war? 
How does homosexuality help us win the culture war? It doesn't. You know, the thing about sodomy, they, you know, I joke about it a lot, but there's some real aspects to this. Sodomy and usury, there's a reason they're in the same level of hell in Dante's Inferno. It's because, as the great E. Michael Jones said, it, it takes that which is fertile and makes it sterile, and that which is sterile and makes it fertile. There's a reason that it's bad, and it's not because, you know, I can't have gay friends or like, what, that, that's such a nonsense argument. It's because it's taking the act of life creation and making it sterile, and then fiat currency is taking that which is dead and giving it fake life. And they're in the same binary together creating evil. And I'm not blaming the homosexual in, in a sense. I'm blaming the evangelical homosexuals where it's like, everyone should be like me. I can't stand those people. It's, it's one thing if someone's brain's wired a little wacky and they're like, hey man, I just, you know, I'm into this shit. And I'm like, all right, buddy. We can still be buddies, just don't ever bring it up around anybody I care about. Uh, <laughs> but it's the ones that are like, oh, vaginas are disgusting. Like, you're gross. Like, everything, vaginas are gross. I'm like, you want, you really want to do this? <laughs> I don't want to get graphic because I think there might be some kids in the, in the room, but vaginas are not gross and assholes are insanely disgusting. <laughs> like, you know, fertile sex makes life, which is great, and sodomy makes fake AIDS and death. <laughs> All right, any other questions? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> no, quicksand was a bitch. Why well, don't a bitch with people is dinosaurs? That one hurt. That hurt way more than the globe for me. Like to find out that uh, dinosaurs were a Smithsonian live from in the Royal Society from like the 1840s. It's all nonsense. Like literally fucking nonsense. That hurt. I was like, you know, I'm 39 wearing my my di dinosaur PJs. Like what? <laughs> No, but quicksand isn't real either. It's, and, and by the way, being my size, quicksand is extra horrifying because it's 6'8", it would take an absurd amount of time. <laughs> so I'd be in quicksand like, oh no! And I'd be like three hours later, I'm like... <laughs> How have I overcome censorship? You have to... It's not a fight between you and these converged nonsense companies, it's a fight between you and yourself. Because you can be, I've been kicked off everything, demonetized, all that. All it did, like, so I was making, like, briefly making a lot of fake, sterile money on YouTube. <laughs> and they demonetized me, and at that point I'd come, I'd, I'd seen the evil that is the Babylonian magic square of, of the fiat. Uh, and people just started mailing me silver and seeds and shit. And it was great. No, it's, it, me and Dave Weiss were talking about this. It's, it, we call it crumbling upwards. Where it's like every time you think that they've shooken you and taken something from you, you realize that they've just backed you into a better pasture. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, censorship is all battle between you and yourself. The, the time when censorship happens is when you hesitate out of fear. That's it. And it's like, I have a song called That Nigger Stole My Bike, and I don't call black people that. You know, it's, I did once when I was nine and someone stole my bike, he was black. But like, I did that song because I wanted to do a joke with a word in it that was so taboo. Okay, the N word is absurd. If you ever say the N word, you, you've cucked yourself. Because I won't argue right now that necrophilia is infinitely more offensive than nigger. That's sex with dead bodies. So when someone, if someone's like, oh, that nigga stole my bike, it's like, hey man, my neighbor's cousin's mailman is black. And I'm like, dude, I know a guy that died and someone fucked him. <laughs> it's pretty profound. It'll take you a little while to think about that, but it's, it's, it's nonsense. And it's also this bizarre notion that you can take a black person's autonomy by uttering a word like fucking like a wizard. It's bizarrely inverse. Like the, the concept of saying N-word is more, is more this concept of racist than not saying that word. It's the exact opposite. It's, it's treating black people like children, like they can't handle a word. It's fucking insane. And I will, and so I wouldn't just rant about it and do jokes like Louis C.K. would do a joke 
about the word. I wanted to do a joke with the word in it where I didn't make it about whether or not I'm allowed to say it or not. And I just took the arrows for it. And I'm glad I did. And that was an element of censorship fighting where it's like, I won't, I won't censor myself based on nonsense. Because once you do, you lose your word, your logos. And never give that up. Let, 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 them, let them kill your YouTube channels. Let them kick you out of clubs. I, I used to have, because my fancy pants and lollipops, everyone has a, a satanic Achilles, right? Mine was never money. It was, uh, I liked the status I had at the Hollywood Improv. They painted me in the mural. I was hanging on the wall like a conquering gladiator. And I could walk in there any night of the week and famous people would, would be like, hey man, I can't wait to see your new jokes and stuff. They took down my picture. They, they, you know, persona non grata me because of my stance against trans child abuse, you know, the child abuse, which is trans children. And they called me all these names, all that stuff, and that didn't hurt. But once I realized that that's all a nonsense loop, it never ends, then you're free. They're, they're, they're literally kicking you out of hell. And when people, it's one thing if you're at the dinner table and you're like, admit it's flat, grandma. Like, <laughs> like they have a right to think you're annoying. But if they disown you or don't want to be your friend because they find out that you, that you have realized that we're not on a spinning globe, it's on them, not you. And, and, and they can come back. I've seen them come back. I've seen them apologize. So don't, you know, it, it, there's a lot of forgiveness involved in this. Like getting angry at people for believing what you believed five years ago is an Achilles heel of this community that I've experienced, you've experienced. You know, it's like, Fuck you, Globe Tard. It's like, are you talking to a mirror from five years ago? You know, like, are you in Dante's Inferno? And so that's my advice, because a lot of people come up to me, and, and like, I inadvertently woke people, a lot of people up to the, the Globe Lie, because of how I did it, wasn't like, you're so stupid if you don't see it. And I was showing my vulnerability, I was showing like, I don't want to be a flat earther, I don't want to do this, I want to win, I want to stay in the side of the normal people. And then eventually I had to face reality, and that's it. Yes. What up? You in the back. Is the Flat Earth Conference the best thing I've ever been to? Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's, it's, very, it's the best conference I've ever been to. And that's a fact. Woo. It's like... Like, I slept a lot during the day today because I had gravy overload last night. Like, I'm talking to people, one guy created a Tesla coil, someone else is telling me about how everything's electricity. I'm literally just like, man. Weiss comes out of nowhere, he's like, dude, we'd be a head aquifer. So I'm like, yeah. And so, it's just, that's like heaven to me. But it does get, I do need to recharge, I'm a giant. What, what's up? Bigfoot's real? As a giant, I do not appreciate, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't think Bigfoot's real. No, I mean, I just don't. I just, I, like, there's all the evidence in the world says the Earth is not a spinning ball. Bigfoot is a jump. I, here's the irony about me. I don't really take a lot of jumps unless I see a lot of evidence. I am big. That's why I've never seen them. <laughs> I'm always looking for Bigfoot. And everyone's like, Bigfoot. And I'm like, where is he? <laughs> I, the whole time it's almost like the sixth sense. Like I was the dead guy the whole time. Like, it turns out I'm like, Bigfoot isn't real. And everyone's like, uh, Bigfoot. That whole bunch of dogs. You know, like Japanese people. <laughs> that, that'd be hysterical if it turned out I was actually Bigfoot. The people just keep taking pictures of me in the wilderness. <laughs> How's my wife? Doc? She she's so grounded, you know. She doesn't care. I mean, she cares about what she cares about my happiness. So she's like, you know, do you want to talk about Antarctica for a bit? I'm like, is that okay? And she's like, yeah, we can talk about Antarctica. Uh, but she's now. You know, it's not her passion. Her passion is our kids and the animals. And, and, and she's, she never was uncomfortable about any of this. I mean, she married me. <laughs> like, you know, as I was getting kicked out of Hollywood, Vice News said that I had a brain worm. 
You know, so I've been in this a while, man. I don't, she doesn't give a shit about what people say about me. She loves me. So it's like, and she's not, she doesn't care about online shit. Thanks. Does what? Do you guys know about David Weiss's app? By the way, give it up for David Weiss. David Weiss. marketing and app making, and he made it selfless. He's the selfless Jew. He really is. He's not gonna, like, once I really, he's not, I, I got some pretty decent antenna for people. Once I realized he, he was really, he's passionately trying to show people this world, and the app is an incredible way to do that. And once I, it was so funny seeing all his Jew powers of marketing and app making, but none of it was out of greed. You know, he's a unicorn. So one more time for Dave Weiss. Any other questions? Where do I live? That's being a little aggressive, gay guy. Do I live in Washington State? Yeah! Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful state outside of Seattle. You know, like we're far outside of Seattle, but it's a, it's a, it's a great place. A lot of rain, a lot of green. You know, according, according to some gravy I, uh, I heard last night, it's like a really good place for electromagnetism. <laughs> what, what do I think about rainbows? Six stars or seven? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Right there. Uh, the seven colored rainbow is God's promise, and the six star rainbow is the inversion in space on soccer. Um, what else? How to Slay a Wizard? I'm working on it right now. It'll be out within the year. Because my father taught uh, persuasion, public speech, mass communication, which I now realize is brainwashing, you know? And, uh, and I, my dad's a complicated figure, and I, I know, you know, my whole childhood, he'd, he'd teach me all this stuff. Like, I'd take college level tests when I was like eight, nine years old, and, and I saw the, you know, he's a wizard teacher, but and it, I saw what it did to him. And I still have a love for him, but he's has a lot of problems. And I want to uh, to honor my father because that's one part about the Bible that uh, I, I used to have problems with was honor honor your parents, you know. And I, it's easy to honor my mother, but my father's a, a bit harder. But I think the way I can honor him is to teach other people how to see through uh, the Tavistocki and brainwashing that, that is being taught at college campuses. Yeah. That's the what? I mean, I mean, Tesla, what? Uh, I, 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 think, I think Edison was a grand one. He was always doing this. What's that? Since realizing the earth is flat, what's the most mind-blowing thing that you've also realized? Since realizing the earth is flat, what's the most mind-blowing thing I've also realized? I think that... No, let me think for a second. Uh, I think, yeah, nuclear bombs. I think, I think nuclear bombs being fake, and, and this, is the, this is the coolest part, is every single one of them except for dinosaurs lowered my fear and anxiety. You know what, when you find out how many, you know what, NASA and Stephen Hawking and all these people, they sound identical to an abusive spouse, where it's like, you are small, you are nothing, you are insignificant, don't leave me. <laughs> That's what they're doing, they're like, look at the Milky Way, it's a, all more grains of sand than all the beaches in the world. And you're just a speck and you're just made because bacteria fucked. And then they fucked and mutated and they got and they mutated and fucked and you're just gonna die. Like literally when you see it, it's like the, the beast that they are. They might as well be doing this. <sighs> you are nothing. You are not made by God. You are just a mistake that will be corrected. I'm just like, fuck that guy. And I think that's one thing that I bring to the Flat Earth community, is a lot of you guys are just really earthy, nice people. You need an alpha dog to just be like, fuck you people! <laughs> because a lot of you guys will just take the shaming and not say anything back, and people are like, oh, how dare you, you're stupid, you're so ignorant. And I don't think a lot of you guys know that you can not... The two streets that you've been given is Savanya being like, I'm the real king, everyone sucks but me. Or just being meek, like being too like, just take it. It's like, no, stand your ground. You know, stand your ground and explain it to people. 
and just say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not gonna change. This is how I see the world. Look around, it ain't moving, bitch. say whatever I want, and I'm going to say shit that's intriguing, and that's why I used to listen to him. And then he got to a point where I think he was signing deals. He was getting the, the millions from Netflix, millions from this, and people don't realize how much you have to give up for those development deals. You know, when I was on uh, a famous, like a, a very highly watched sitcom, I made more money in one week than a lot of teachers will make in a year. And so... I didn't have a problem giving that up because for whatever reason, I just, I don't know. Money never really did it for me because some of my happiest <coughs> memories were while well, we were very poor. So I never, I, I have my flaws, I have my weaknesses, I have my sins, but that one never was one of them. I think a guy like Joe Rogan has his appetites and he's been uh, fed for so long that someone said to him, I don't think he was threatened, I don't think it was like CIA threatening him with a dossier. I think it was just like, if you want your lollies and your fancies, if you want your sodomy behind the dumpsters, you're gonna have to keep saying what you say. Like, watch yourself. Because I've had handlers. I didn't know they were handlers. I thought they were just called agents. You know, where they basically say like, oh, we got a call, you might want to pump the brakes on. <laughs> One time I had a development deal with Disney, and I pointed out that, that uh, what was it? What, what was that, Ebola virus looked exactly like the Disney ears, like the Mickey ears. And I, I posted that on like Facebook back in the day, and Disney had just paid me like $75,000 to be exclusive with me, you know? And I was like, dude, a bolo looks just like the devil mouse. And my, <laughs> and my agent was like, you gotta take it down. I'm like, fuck no. I'm like, they'll think, this is how naive I was. I was like, they'll think it's hilarious. Those guys are great. Because I'd go to these meetings and everybody's high-fiving me and being like, we saw, you know, we saw you do stand-up and you're so good, oh. And I'm like, yeah, these dudes crush. And then, and then I was like, no, they'll love it. And then when you don't take it down, they're like, yeah, they, uh, they don't want to renew. And I'm like, was it, did they get Ebola? <laughs> it's a true story. Look at the Ebola thing. It's a fucking Mickey Mouse ears. Cause this is the, this is the catch 22 with a guy like me is what makes me so funny and what makes me marketable is the very thing that makes it not controllable. <laughs> We're like the thing that makes me crush at the Hollywood improv is the very thing that I, I can't do both. I can't be like, oh, I'll censor and lie in this area, but not this area. Because when you're on a stage and somebody fucking sets you up with, you know, Cosmo soundtrack musical on the keyboard, you have to trust your instincts to be able to adapt. And if you're a liar, you can't. Because you keep losing those microseconds of like, can I say this? Will I get the fancies? You have to be in the moment. And so that's why I've been hired so many times, almost as like this culture war mercenary, and then people are like, this has been a horrible mistake. <laughs> anyway, I'll... One more song! No, uh, no. <laughs> that, that, that's like, here's the thing, and, and Much Love, I love that, that uh, we didn't have the time to do a sound check, because they, they were shooting a movie in Much Love, but that's, uh, that's set up for someone Joe Rogan sized, and the sounds are insane. <laughs> So, I think I did a good job on the piano. We did the Coldplay thing. And now we're just gonna have maybe two or three more questions. Cause I was gonna go into, uh, yeah, I got a little more time, maybe 15 more minutes. I mean, I, play, I do live streams every day. I'll play you any song you want. Just don't make me sit like the fucking Peanuts guy. <laughs> I didn't see any that I was asleep. They were doing banners? They, I'm too big for that. I would've just started batting the planes down out of instinct. <laughs> just kidding. No, I was thinking of a snooze. See, I, I have like a homestead vibe. I have two kids, eight goats, 45 chickens, four ducks, all this shit. So I wake up before the sun rises. I, I go to bed after the sunset every day, working all day long. So it's like, when I'm at a conference, 
I just slept the whole time. Like I was just like, because normally my wife is like, I'm like ah! so I just got some real good sleep. So I missed the banners, but it sounds breathtaking. What's up? What do I think about Greta Th Thunderbird? Uh, Greta Thunderbird is the product of bad parenting. You know, she didn't have a mom, she didn't have a dad. Her dad was cocked and her mommy was gone. And so she has a lot of inner turmoil that she's now gonna blame on invisible forces called global warming that is nonsense. And it's a tragedy, but at the same time, that bitch can sit down. That's how I view it. I, I'm a hater, it's like I get it, but I'm not gonna be browbeaten by a 15 year old foreigner who looks like she has fetal alcohol syndrome. Yeah. Well, what do you think about the Greta Thunderbird? Do you agree? You agree with me? Good. Thunder Talk. What's up? How to break the earth and splat with your kids? Yeah. Never tell them what's round. <laughs> That's why we're homeschooling. Like, we're gonna get to a point, guys, the homeschooling movement has grown. There's gonna be a point, there's gonna be a point where somebody has a spinning ball. The kids are like, what? <laughs> like, we don't, you might, dude, we don't, we're never gonna introduce that concept to them. And then maybe I'll tell them about it, I'll be like, there's some silly men with the silly little hats. And they think, <laughs> Because here's the thing, it's not, it's not just Jews. It's anyone with weird hats, I figured it out. Because you got the Pope with the big boner hat, and then you got the Shriners with the weird hat. The, the way wizards work, this is all gonna be in the book, is if you wear an absurd, like every wizard has to wear an absurd hat, and no one has to talk about it. Like, the Jewish hats are fucking retarded. They wear these tiny little condoms on their head, and no one says anything. They don't protect it from the sun at all. And then you have the Pope with his boner hat, and then you have the Shriners with their like upside down cups on their head. When you see a guy with a weird hat, don't listen to them about the shape of the earth. Huh? What's that? Do baby boomer? Oh, do you? <laughs> we went to the moon, Millennium. What have you done besides picked up by the scraps? When I was your age, I bought a house for 17 grand. Now all you do is have all this debt and shame. All right, what else you guys want? I don't do much of your impression. I can't remember how to do that pattern. He's like, oh, the, look at the zodiacal lights. <laughs> I could go back to the moon in a nanosecond if I wanted to. And they go up into the space, and there's a sign of diacal lights. I love it, the space. You got me, you got me. Any other questions? How many rogues tall is Red Pill Rooster? How many rogues tall is Red Pill Rooster? Uh, 7.77. It's all very freely sound. Huh? Uh, I don't do an impression, but what do I think about Super Crowder? I think he's, uh, He's a gatekeeper, you know? It's like, I was working with him for a while, and I used to really like him, and then I realized, you know, one of the things that bonded us originally was that the trans kid thing, that I stood up for something in Hollywood, and I took the arrows, and people saw why everybody apologizes, because they just ground me into dust, well, allegedly. And so, he was there for me in that time, and so when I finally figured out, one of the roots of the trans child movements is uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals out of Israel, he shut his mouth. And I never respected him again, and then I just looked at him with a much deeper eye, and I realized it was all bullshit. Because under the BDI, uh, BDSM, is that what it's called? The, you're not allowed to boycott Israel, so in certain states, you're not allowed to boycott Tampa Pharmaceuticals, which has the monopoly on child sex change hormones. And so when you actually care, and you try to figure out these mysteries, then you really realize who's getting paid by who, and who actually cares about children and who just wants a plane. And so once I developed that disdain for somebody, I just uh, fire up the old live stream and call a sodomite a thousand times. <laughs> How many children do I have to have to be a man? How many children do you have to have to be a man? That's a good question, man. Three. Uh, I don't think there's an actual number, but I think what it is is, uh, 
What makes you not a man is that you keep pulling out like a coward. If you're trying to have a child and you don't have one, you can still be a man. But if you avoid responsibility and you're like, I just want, I just want to feel good for me, then you're not a man. I'm gonna make my wife take a hormone pill so her body thinks it's in the first trimester and it sterilizes her womb so I don't have to use a condom. Tee hee, tee hee. That's not a man. Don't sterilize your sex. Wanna know who does that? Homos. It's true. It's like trying to turn the whole country to a gay disco. Disco, disco. Sucky, sucky. <laughs> Any more? Challenger explosion. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I, I, I did that. I talked about that in my special conspiracy queries. Uh, but remember the Challenger explosion when they wheeled out that, that little TV when we were kids? You know, I remember they, they, I was six years old and they said, oh, and one of the, like a school teacher just like me is going to be in this rocket ship. And they like wheeled it out and we're watching. We're like, oh, this is going to be great. So, and everybody just sat there like, I didn't know how to swear yet, but I, in, in my mind was, what in the fuck? And then no one spoke, they just wheeled it out. Like, <laughs> and my grandmother, I didn't talk about this on the special because it's kind of a buttskill, but one of the reasons I have some personal spite towards NASA is because now that I know that was a lie, I didn't go see my grandmother the last time before she died because I was scared to be on an airplane because they scared the fuck out of me for social control. So I'll always hate them for it. You know? I, we had the tickets ready to go, and I'm like, I don't want to get on that airplane. My parents are like, it's so safe. I'm like, they wheeled out a TV, and I watched it explode, Mom. And then it became these creepy horns or like a scorpion or some shit. You know? And that's the funniest thing about kids. It's like kids can see the symbols more than adults sometimes. I remember, as soon as I saw that, I was like, that looks like horns or a scorpion. Why is it like that? And then everyone's like, that's just how they explode. And then eight hours deep into Crow 777, I'm like, it's fucking symbols. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Why did you lie about Johnny Arcade sending poison gummy bears to murder your children? Oh, we got a troll. Just kick him out. I never lied about anything. It's Jeff, we 